Now, it's truly spectacular to see the power of the James Webb Telescope in terms of properly seeing a specific planet that is different from the other ones that we've seen. We've seen Jupiter, we've seen that of Neptune, but now we're looking at the seventh planet, which is indeed called Uranus. And this shows some incredible visuals that hasn't been seen before. Usually, we've had two images one from a specific instrument known as Voyage 2 spacecraft when it was passing by the planet around the year 1986 and Kirk Observatory with advanced adaptive optics and so seeing these two images and now this new data from James Webb Telescope Three images, truly stunning, one an up-close take on this particular planet, next is seeing it in the midst of other planetary bodies, and finally we have some labeling based on specific features on this particular planet. So let's dive into the details about these images from James Webb Telescope about the Uranus. Planet. Now, the question is, why is Uranus such a special planet? This here is known as one of the big ice giants, and this here is interesting because of how it rotates. It rotates along its side, which is roughly around 90 degrees, and go from the plane of the orbit specifically for Uranus orbit. Now this causes extreme seasons since the planet poles experiences many years of constant sunlight followed by an equal number of years of complete darkness. Now just to keep this in mind, Uranus takes around 84 years to orbit the sun which is massive timeline right there and currently it is late spring which means that it's heading towards the summer specifically looking at the northern pole so this here is visible based on this image that you see right here as it talks about how uranus north summer will be in the year what 2028 that is <laughs> going to be a long time from now but Definitely got to be seeing how James Webb will be able to capture the summer view of this planet compared to its spring view, late spring view, currently here. Now, in contrast, when Voyager 2 visited Uranus, it was summer at the southern pole. Now, the south pole is now on the dark side currently of the planet, which is out of our view uh, and faces the dark side of space. Now, in terms of James Webb Telescope, use of its near-infrared cameras, the camera was able to combine colors from the blue, which is around the 1.4 microns, and that of the orange, which is around 3 microns. And so, combining these two produces these incredible images that we're seeing right here, specifically looking at the blue section of the specific planet in contrast to some parts which is really white. Now, the white part is known as where you have a lot of the ice caps that are located and that is where light from the sun is coming directly at looking at the northern pole currently of this planet or you can say that it is polar caps that you see at the northern pole on the other side the blue part is labeled to be the clouds that are present in uranus and when you look around the rings there is a specific ring that is highlighted to be zeta ring in this image the incredible dynamics of the clouds of uranus is really visually seen right here thanks to James Webb Telescope powerful sensitivity in contrast to Voyager 2's images that is more of having a blue-green combination that is more focused at the visible spectrum which is not too rich in detail and analysis so this will be fantastic to see how this image here that is produced by James Webb Telescope will be compared indeed with not only past images from Voyager but also in 2028 when hopefully we get another image of the summer view of this planet 
here. Now, looking at the ice cap section of the Uranus, it's really fascinating to see how this is in contrast to that of Hubble Space Telescope images. And this shows that at the wavelength, which is at the infrared of J's Webb Telescope, it shows that, hey, there is a brightening that is really revealing at the center of the ice cap which is not found in any of the telescopes, specifically Hubble Space Telescope. So this here is definitely due to the enhancement and sensitivity of James Webb to be able to focus on that region and also maybe more analysis can be taken as to why in details about this sudden interesting picture that is shown here in contrast to that of Hubble Space Telescope. Now focusing on the rings of Uranus, it's really interesting to know that Uranus has 13 known rings but out of the 13, 11 are actually seen right here and these 11, some of them are really bright and the brightness is definitely due to the fact that some of them actually merges together in such a way that the level that I've seen shows that hey nine of them are the major rings while the other two are the faint rings and so the faint rings in the future is going to be analyzed and hopefully James Webb will produce more images about details surrounding the faint rings that are mainly on the outside of Uranus. So really fantastic to see these features that is represented on this particular zoom intake of Uranus. And now stepping back out to see at the broader scale of things, we see that Uranus has 27 moons. But out of the 27, we just have not that much that is shown right here. And at the very background there are galaxies from other parts of that specific section of the universe so looking at the moons specifically that are represented in this image we have the following Ariel, Umbriel, Punk, Miranda, Aubryon and Titania. Now the incredible thing about the moon reveal of the six out of the 27 moons is how bright James Webb Telescope is able to showcase those six moons and the goal in future explorations is to be able to discover the other that are around Uranus and seeing how James Webb will be capable of meeting up to expectations or let's put it this way exceeding expectations in not only revealing the moons that are or not shown here but also the other rings that are faint in this particular planet so really incredible stuff that we have in terms of not now but also the future of uranus exploration and understanding more about the incredible dynamics that the clouds processes and i'll say the atmosphere of uranus is capable of so let's know your thoughts about all this in the comment section down below and by that way we can talk to you all soon stay smart as always and believe in yourselves